。说明这支战队，呃，我对他们不是太了解，但是只知道他们就是换了个中单嘛，这赛季，换了个新中单这个赛季。然后他们比赛我看的不多，但是最近就是了解了一下，就是他们胜胜场还是比较蛮多的。如果我们能拿下他们这场比赛的话，应该对我们进入季后赛会有很大的帮助。对上苏宁的话，就是自己失误尽量少一点，然后还有就是和打野的配合。嗯、呃，对苏宁这支队伍，他们好像也是打中野的吧？我就知道这一点，其他不是太清楚。Corn with some strong words against、uh, Suning. I'm not sure if that was meant to be a burn. Like, I don't, I don't really know anything about this team. I mean, he says that he doesn't know, but in my opinion, I feel like he has them completely pegged.、Yeah. That their mid-jungle synergy is the soul of the team. I would call it more of the backbone of which they're building everything on top of, and then you throw Cat into that. And that's kind of the three big playmakers for TOP. And frankly, that game, that's where we saw a lot of the breakdown. You know, Angel was still doing his job, controlling the、uh, pivot point of mid, so that they could funnel a lot of、uh, farm on Hacker. I'm not talking about a funnel comp. I'm just making sure that he、he's、gets got gold. Exactly, that he gets the scuttle crabs. That he gets the invade, that he's got Lissandra in his back pocket, but unfortunately they weren't able to get Cat or, or excuse me, Fury involved in that. And the fact that he was constantly locked down in that bottom lane until eventually he was finally able to break down the tier one through Suning's strong early game play stalled out the window of opportunity for those arrows, for those picks to try and break the game open. That said, we're looking at a new pick and ban for this game too. Let's see what TOP decide to bring to bear as they will now find themselves on the red side and Suning find themselves on the blue. Oh, we don't get to talk about the coach much behind TOP, but that is BSYY. He's a long-term legacy player of the LPL. He goes all the way back to the、uh, Spiders, where he used to play ADC. He's played with the likes of people like PYL. So this guy is a long-term veteran. He's been coaching the scene for a long time. Actually, having a stint with LGD at one point in time. And it's just nice to see him continuously work through the league, and it feels like he's almost like the Yamato Cannon of the LPL, where he comes into new teams and he teaches them such strong fundamentals, and you can clearly see the fingerprint that he leaves on the teams that he works with. I mean, already we're starting to see some growth out of TOP off of these wins、uh, that they've been taking now five and seven. More wins than their entire spring split in only seven weeks. Now we do have a Rakan first pick from Suning, perhaps looking towards RNG's games earlier and taking some inspiration, as Gragas is the follow-up. And also,、uh, Yoon is one of the best Rakan players that we have in the league, right there with Ming and Mako. He is insane on this champion. That said, what it means is that the Gragas went through. So Gragas was banned last time around by Suning. We talked about how.、Uh, Double or I always want to say triple X. Why is your name double X? <laughs> XX and Corn they love to play camp the mid lane. Corn will play an assassin. It's either going to be Talon, Yasuo, or、uh, the Aurelia like we saw in the last game. This time around it's Yasuo. And by giving someone the Gragas, you have access to level two, level three gank, which a hundred percent double X is going to do.、Mm. It doesn't、we'll、get to be、see. triple X now. He's、yeah. lost next. <laughs> He's only at the two. We'll see what that's going to be though, because Angel gets the chance to counterpick into that mid lane once again. He had some pretty good success on the Lissandra, and now gets the chance to take it again in this game too against a much scarier gank threat. This time though, he does have some more counter gank from that Trundle. Is it because he has good success on the champion, or is it because that's all he can play? I'm not saying one is causing the other. Simply that it、uh, could be correlation, could be causation. We'll find out at the conclusion of this series. We can draw a verdict because now we're looking to the next pickup. Kennen is the hover and lock-in. For TOP, very early on for Moyu, and we see this all the time from TOP. They have no problem show,、uh, showing their hands, showing their solo lanes, and allowing so many different counter picks because they don't care what your strategy is. They just care about themselves, and that's another thing. If you're a, a brand new team in League of Legends, if you're trying to climb up the the rungs, don't worry so much about denying from your opponent. Just focus on yourself. Eliminate a lot of the variables,、uh, and just say, okay, these are the champions that we're good at. I'm only good at Lissandra, so I'm going to play Lissandra every single time because then I'm just focusing. On how am I communicating with the team? How am I synergizing? What are my plays? What are my decision making? Versus taking to all of the variables of matchup and composition. Though we are still seeing some good respect out of TOP. Not only is it the Camille ban away from Shao Al in the top lane, it's also the Zaya ban away from Fury, getting rid of that late game threat as well. So TOP might be looking to keep Suning in that early get,、uh, mid game power. I、Trop? suppose I don't want to say、spike? drop, but it's a spike for that、Rut. team.、Um, Trench. To further hurt their late game trough. There you go. 
over-exaggerating the early game powers of Sooning by banning away late game champions so that their late game becomes more volatile. Of course, that means that you have to play through that early mid game yourself as Vladimir is the pickup for Chocho. It's going to be really dangerous to play through mid game when you're looking at a Yasuo who has massive power spikes on two items and then a Vladimir at level 11 who has two points in Hemo Plague. Like, I'm just going to tell you right now it's that fighting at level 11 uh, against TOP's composition is suicide. So instead, Sooning, they have to adapt. They have to show us something new, either playing very early through the early game or taking it very late as Gangplank is picked up for Xiao Ao. Perfect. This is what we needed from Sooning. We wanted some sort of late game insurance policy. And I have a, uh, a suspicion that if Fury locks in that Ezreal, that he's going to go for the double tier build mm. and look for a late game scaling Ezreal build to get more damage on that Q as well, because it helps that, okay, we can have a, a good strong mid game, but we can also hyperscale into late game, which is where we felt we ran out of steam last time. Looking at the Varus now from Fury as a potential answer to that. Again, also very good at that poke and scaling later on with a variety of builds. And Pike is left oh open. No. It was Fiddlesticks, Alistar, and T.O.P. You can even see Cat with a laugh and a smile as he locks in that champion. Oh, boy. Yeah. So we got the signature champions for both of our supports the, here. The win more. Yeah, the win more. Yoon is... Uh, probably the third best recon player that we have in the league. He is so good on the champion, especially when you put him in tandem with Fury. Who would you put at number two? Because I know number one's Mako. Ming. Really? Yeah, didn't you just okay. watch him yes, win? No, I know he's good on the champion, but look, there's a scale. Okay. Please. You're welcome. <laughs> and Kat gets his pike, and he's our number one pike player in the league. He plays more of it than anyone else. I'm not quite sold if pike is a good champion or Kat is a good <laughs> pike player, but he's effective on the one champion. One of the two. Oh, wait, we've got to get the flags. i got to get that out of the way. No, <laughs> the you should draw. stick your eyebrows in it, Dom. <laughs> Absolutely not. No way. We've so, already seen what happens. Fun fact, we can't stand at our... I mean, we could stand at our desk, but we're not allowed to stand at any of our casting stations because Dom is so tall. <laughs> My <laughs> head appears in most of the shots when they're not supposed to. You are such an outlier that the time it would take to resize the camera for all of the different sizes that we have on this team would take too long. So thank you, Dom. Yeah, I'm literally hunched on the desk right now. Why don't they just lift up the flags more? It's not that hard. They're literally hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> exactly. Just tighten the rope. Why don't we just, just take you off more. by the kneecaps more? <laughs> Look, I'm just saying it's easier to move rope than it is to remove kneecaps. Presumably, I don't know. I'm actually not very skilled at kneecapping people, but who knows? Perhaps we could find out a little bit more. That said, it's T.O.P. versus Sooning. T.O.P. taking game one. If they win this game, they will have twice as many wins in seven weeks than they did in 10 weeks in the spring. This is T.O.P., the team that had the longest loss streak in LPL history recovering and becoming something new. But also changing up their roster. So it should be noted that that roster that went on that massive loss streak isn't the roster that's starting today. It does have a couple of the bones from it, like Chocho and Cat, but ultimately it's really been Korn as kind of the new injection into this roster alongside Moyu that has given them so much more momentum to make that fight for fourth. Well, perhaps he finally feels that it's time that he deserves to be back in the LPL and start challenging that top tier talent once again and making a run back to his peak, that World Finals all those years ago. That said, we've loaded onto the rift for game two between T.O.P. and Sooning. Fun fact about Top Sports Gaming is that they are one of the largest shoe and athletic wear manufacturers in China, which I'm assuming then makes them one of the largest in the world, just based yeah. off of market share. <laughs> By sheer population density. <laughs> By sheer numbers alone. Yes. So now we do see double cleanse from both of our ADs as there's some brief skirmishing over rewards. Yoon taking the gleaming quill very early on, so Chocho and Cat know that they are safe from a quick knockup. Yeah, interesting that Yoon would have a Q. So obviously trying to synergize with the poke that uh, Fury is going to allow onto that Varus and try to poke uh -oh. them out. And Get lands it again. He's like, what was it, if we're calling Road the Wanderer, what was it that we're calling Cat? The Masochist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I mean, he is on Pike. Uh, the drowned one, whoops. Whoops. 
That's, Indeed. That's a bit of a miss, and that's going to give a little bit more push pressure to Fury and Yoon. I think as we expect on a Varus Rakan against Vladimir Pike. Yeah, it's not going to be a fun lane for Chocho and Kat. They definitely need a bit more levels into their abilities. Now, uh, if Double X decides to meander down there, because Why he did you start... just call him XX? Because I don't know, it sounds weird coming out of my mouth. XX, Double X, Triple X. Can I call him Triple X? No! That's Xander Cage! I'm just saying he missed a good opportunity. <laughs> I'm going to have a chat with him after the game. I'm going to lock him down to the player. I'm like, listen, you could be total Vin Diesel right now. I'll show him a picture of Vin Diesel. The language barrier won't be a problem. He's, oh, yeah, I know that guy. I think he's going to gank. Uh-oh. Bone Skewer will hit onto Yoon and the Tides of Blood. The turnaround damage, though, is never going to be in their favor, yeah. especially when that uh, Q hits from Rakan because you get the immediate health back. So you can see that in the elongated trades, as well as Yoon being able to tag the fadeaway Q, that Fury and Yoon walk out just fine. Still happy to take these trades back and forth as the Bone Skewer continues to just barely trade some damage back, not really forcing out too much sustain, but Chocho, even in case things get a bit dicey, he's running the Predator Vladimir, so that's Boots 3-pot for the start. As Moe well, is doing some damage here, but Shao Al still holding holding down the fort with biscuits, total biscuits of rejuvenation. Yeah, and recognizing that he's against a cannon, so taking Grass versus Klepto. As now we get to see how uh, Angel has changed things up and just going for Resolve second, so recognizing that he's against a, uh, a Yasuo. Giving himself just that little bit more sustain as, oop, you're gonna miss that one. But still just holding the wave away from this Yasuo. It is very, fairly difficult to do so because Yasuo is such a pain in the butt to lane against. And taking a look at our junglers, XX and Hacker, simply maneuvering around the map. Looks like it was fairly standard starts. A full clear out of Hacker as he is getting towards level four. And we are seeing not quite the full clear as Krugs are still up for XX. I actually feel that Chocho and Kat messed this one up a little bit. I'll hold the Ooh. point because XX getting around the Scuttlecrab vision, now looking for the gank. Oh, you flashes in, Shout Oh, out. you can have flash. W. Gets away. Okay. Repeat gank. Um, so what I was going to say is that Chocho and Cat, when they were far forward playing with the Bone Skewer and trying to trade on Fury and Yoon, they actually had the wave shoved into Varus and Rakan and then closed the gank opportunity that XX would have had on bottom, even though he started his jungle pathing top, as opposed to letting themselves get pushed in like they are now and exposing Fury and Yoon to a possible early Gragas gank, which is normally what XX likes to do. So I feel like we didn't see the level two, level three gank simply because because his bot lane decided to go a bit aggro mm -hmm. when they should have just chilled out. Just wait. <laughs> there is no chill uh, when we look at T.O.P. Though Sooning does have some chill. It's not quite working out for them in that game one because their chill allowed T.O.P. to get back into the game as this wave now pushes up. You can see the pretty consistent damage that Varus is starting to do to this turret is starting to add up. Already about 25% of its health has been taken down by about five minutes. And the piercing arrow, but Kat goes down. First blood to Yoon, just dashes in with the ignite and walks away. And it's just too easy. This is to be expected with Varus and Rakan. That's exactly how you're going to play it. Fury and Yoon, also the third best bottom lane that we have in the LPL, just together as a duo. Obviously, when you start breaking them up, I think that SMLZ is a better ADC than Fury. But Yoon right now, I think, is a better performing support than someone like Kalu which is why I rank them as a duo above the Rogue Warriors bot lane. Especially on that Rakan that we were talking about earlier. You can see now that he's got that first blood, it's Frostfang boots down into the bottom lane to help provide further harass. Though we do see the recurve bow start out of Fury. He still has the flexibility to go to Blade of the Ruined King or Gwinsus. And we've seen so many different lethality builds coming out yeah. of uh, Varus. The flexibility that he has, the fact that ADCs now, are getting more power. But here's the follow-up gank. It's actually not going to come from XX, but it comes instead from Hacker. Moyu goes down, pillar to the back of the head, and that Yordle goes back home. And now you have two kills in two different lanes, and suddenly where T.O.P. fumbled in the early game in game number one, this is completely <laughs> on fire in game number two. Things looking a little bit worse. XX is just looking for an opening. He's going to try to invade and take something away on the opposite side, but Yuna's already on that side of the map as Korn will help push this wave in to support his jungler in XX. Sorry, that's Hacker. I'm used to seeing XX on Trundle. Too. Yeah. Uh, you know why? Because Trundle looks a bit like Vin Diesel. <laughs> Doesn't he look like Groot? Are you saying that Vin Diesel is a troll? No, I'm saying he looks like Groot. All right, here comes the wave. Moyu actually just takes over to level six, makes that dive a little bit less enticing. Even the teleport going in as Moyu tries to clear it out, but here comes Angel. That's the dive and the Glacial Claw, plus the 
ice prison on top of it. Angel finds himself the kill, three to zero. Plus all of the CC you could ever want. And take a look at where XX is on the map right now. He's doing his red buff. So beautifully timed from Sunning to not only have the TP advantage, but also recognize that XX would be on the top side of the map doing red and not able to respond with any sort of counterplay bottom. It's going to be three very easy kills, first prick, and Sunning again are in the driver's seat for the early game. And that gives a lot of gold over to Sunning, as expected from one of the best early game teams in the league. Now, can they transition that into a strong late game? They've got some good transition in the mid game with the Lissandra Varus. They've got that Rakan for engage if they want to continue to snowball this advantage. TOP find themselves on the wrong side of things. For me, the most important thing that Sunny needs to be looking at right now is making sure that they're still able to acquire gold onto their gangplank. He's sitting between items. You want to get that Trinity Force as fast as possible. Um, obviously, unlocking from him, him from the lane can make that easier or more difficult depending on how TOP what they do with the waves, what they're doing with camping the lanes, but they need to get that GP towards the Trinity Force so that Sooning can rock into mid game, super powerful and super confident that they can fight anything in tandem with the Cannon Barrage. Well, that first fight could very well be over this dragon as Scuttle Crab is taken. Shao Al on top of this ward will watch it go down, and they decide to turn onto the Ocean Dragon. Not quite as impactful as a mountain or an infernal, but certainly still helpful if things end up getting a little bit dicey, especially if you can get up to three Ocean Dragons, then you can siege indefinitely as Chocho eats some damage. That's the Hemo Plague, and he's a low. Yeah, still going to do a lot of work for them in the lane phase, however, the Ocean Dragon being able to uh, regen a lot. Chocho's still alive from the late Hemo Plague. XX over the wall. Get over he's. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. He hates to see that happen. Cat even goes in. XX coming in late, but remember, he's got no body slam. And he's got no chance. He's just juking him out. They don't know he doesn't have a body slam. He just needs to walk forward. Ewan's like, uh-oh, he's got a body slam. Flash body slam? Flash body slam cask? Oh, man. And uh, again, it's what are they going to do with Shao Al on the gangplank? So they let the wave push into him while the wave was pushing in. They didn't want to overextend Shao Al. They pulled him over to the dragon, let him, you know, pick up the dragon with the team. I think he had a quick little stint through mid lane, maybe grabbed a couple of minions there. But now he's got a nice, big, fat two waves pushing into him going to take his time with that one, probably have the Trinity Force on his neck, next back, and that's where everything should start to explode for Sooning. They need to start throwing the Lissandra at every single play and stacking it with the Cannon Barrage at that moment. I mean, Xiao Al is still even holding that wave up top to deny Moyu, who is forced to head bottom and perhaps follow up on XX's mistake as Blue Buff has now been picked up by Angel. And I believe that is the revolver on the way to the Proto Belt as well. So not AP. quite an item completion, but still getting there. I should hope Lissandra builds AP. Oh, I thought you were talking about Kennen. No, that is also the revolver on Moyu. That's a good point as well. He is going AP. Yeah. Yeah. I was half listening. Yes, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, Dom, it is the AP Kennen. <laughs> It's like, that's excellent. Let's talk about the thing I was talking about, Lissandra. <laughs> you know what I want to talk about? <laughs> bot lane. No, it's fine. What do you want to talk about? Uh, I want to talk about bot lane because I feel like T.O.P. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. Because I feel like T.O.P., because uh, you made the... You made a great point that Moe <laughs> was denying the wave or was being denied the wave. Now the wave has pushed back into him, but once he clears this, it's probably going to push back into the gangplank. Mm -hmm. And in these windows, make use of your big ultimate on Kennen. Try to punish Fury and Yoon constantly being pushed down here. I mean, that's one way to do it. If Yoon walks up for a ward, eats some good damage, but luckily he's able to shield himself up and just take that trade back as Chocho trying to get some AP, trying to keep up, as that is actually the wit's end first out of Fury to get him through the early game trough that Varus has. Yeah, Vladimir, Gragas, AP huh. Cannon, he doesn't want any of oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. This is mean. It absolutely is, but Moyu has flash this time, though there isn't anybody with teleport to follow it up. No! no! Why would you do that? Moyu walks into the brush. He actually does get the two-man stun and walks away with his life, but when, when you flash into the stun to deny yourself the ability to follow with barrel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get him. I got him. <laughs> oh, no. That's like when the sun blocks your eyes and the baseball just comes straight between the eyes. <laughs> oh, I've got it. <laughs> okay, that does mean that we get a chance to see the push down to the bottom tier one. As Sooning are going to try and take that top rift, Harold, but T.O.P. using corn in the mid lane 
As the cask lands, and they actually land the combo. Angel's over the wall, but they've already killed that Rakan. Angel stalls this out, trying to clear out the minion wave. Teleport coming in from both uh, Shao Al and Moyu as they're trying to get in. Shao Al goes low, but Angel eats the Hemo Plague. He goes down. One execution is ready. Cat has got the reset. He's looking for the second one, though. Stalls it out with the perfect timing. Shao Al could be the target, but he finds a kill. And Korn will stall this wave. Are they going to continue to dive onto this? Who am I kidding? Of course they are. Korn goes in, drops himself the wind wall, a double kill, and Chao Cho walks away with his life. Great tower manipulation there from T.O.P. We said it was going to be about the bottom side of the map. T.O.P. see that Suning had used all the resources topside and then throw everything in the kitchen sink bottom. Now, meanwhile, it does mean that the Rift Herald will take down the mid tower, so Suning still, I'm not going to call it trading up, but definitely trading slightly closer to even. They need to be able to make these trades to get back into the game because now that's got some very important gold into T.O.P.'s coffers. Spellbinders first finished for Chocho. -Cho. Phantom Dancer done as well, and it all starts with this die. And what I love here is when Kennen actually comes in, and knowing that he doesn't have ultimate, he's like, no, 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 I'm going in. We're going hard, boys. <laughs> it's just about the lightning rush. Because uh, for a second, it looks like Suning might be able to turn this around. You're like, what is Moyu actually going to do for the fight here? But they do such a beautiful job uh, managing the tower aggro. And Korn in particular is such a clean Yasuo player. He plays this perfectly. Chocho then knows, okay, I'm the Vladimir. I've got the W. I've got the health bar. I've got the tower aggro. Korn, do your thing. And this could be where T.O.P. are finding their strength as this feasible five-man roster, just like the Avengers, coming together to beat insurmountable odds or juggle a turret for about 30 seconds. So here's the real question. <laughs> who, who did it worse, the turret or Thanos? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask who's Black Widow, but that works. <laughs> okay. Well, that's easy. That's Cat. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Deep into enemy lines for no reason. He's and just then... like, swiggity swiggity, get exactly. this booty. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Meanwhile, Korn is the grizzled Tony Stark. Like, I went into space. I died. Uh-oh. That's a bit scary, but no, they're looking for Fury. Oh! They've got the right target selection. They don't take the fight in front. They take the fight in back. They kill the carry and absolutely destroy him. Now, Hacker goes in. That's the cannon barrage, and T.O.P. are chasing it down again. Thanos doesn't stand a chance. It's T.O.P. are chasing Suning back to the base. The flash bone skewer onto another grand entrance, but Suning are running for their lives. And the thing is, is Suning are thinking to themselves, where the hell did this come from? I thought we were winning this game. Did we take top tower <laughs> first? And suddenly everything is flipped on its head. That dive cost Suning massive, and T.O.P. did not let up. They immediately went back bottom. They immediately forced the fight again, and they are immediately stacking everything behind Korn. This Yasuo is getting huge. And that oh mid-game spike that Suning's composition wants to fight in, guess what? Yasuo's right there as well, only about to get stronger. So T.O.P. are like, okay, let's fight mid-game. Yeah. We're going to get level 9 on Vladimir. As soon as he's level 11, we're coasting in front of you. And look at the kill distribution as well. Not getting reduced gold on just about anyone as they just commit to poor Fury. Oh. And Suning just didn't expect it. You can see where Fury's position is, the fact that his team was uh, late to collapse on him. They had maybe an inkling trying to set up the vision because they were probably looking towards the objective like the Dragon. But against a team like T.O.P. who was, as you like to say, Dom, a bit down and dirty, a bit getting in the mud, the Jell wrestling team, you just you cannot take your eyes off of them. They're like mini rogue warriors. They're just crazy. <laughs> Moyu is clearing out the wave here as that barrel will be denied, along with another. Moyu knows he doesn't want to get denied again. I'm not sure if he saw that Hacker was on the way, but still safer play for Moyu after that early laning phase as he makes his way back to base. He's got his proto belt finished too, and looks like Sterix is on the way for Korn as he does have that Jorim's fist. Yeah. 5-0 on the Asso. Real big! At this point, T.O.P., they just need to play around their strong points and Suning need to slow down this game. Get tempo and get control. They want to be the people that are making the engages with the things like the Lissandra, like the GP Ultimate, but they've had issues really coordinating themselves on an open map. It feels like as you were saying in game number one, this is where you need to put the magnifying glass for both these teams between 20 and 25 minutes. It's only 16 now, but the game feels like it's being amplified or, or accelerated. Uh, accelerated very quickly. Because as soon as the open map happens, this is where your decision making really comes in and your macro strategy. And neither of these teams are the cleanest at it. <laughs> to put it nicely, yes. Though we are starting to see some more gold end up on the Suning side. 
while their decision making hasn't been spectacular, they still have plenty of opportunity to grow, especially with this composition, considering Fury did go for the early game power spike of a wit's end against a largely AP comp. Pity that all that gold went to the Yasuo, um, who has been diving him. But we still can see that there is an opportunity for Sunni to try to fight in this. That Proto Belt has been finished for Angel. Shout Out has his Triforce. Tiamat is close to being, or has been finished, sorry, on Hacker. So he's able to get some big damage on these fights as well, if they can separate the members of T.O.P. It's just it's a big if, though. a real feels bad moment. I love the fact that you brought up the fact that uh, Barris has all of this MR, and it's Yasuo who's the massive pain <laughs> in the ass. There's but one member I need to not worry about. Oh, no. There's also a huge problem of how is Barris going to survive any of these fights? Look at all of the dive threat. They oh, have yeah. a Pike, they have a Vladimir, they have a Gragas, and they have a Yasuo. That guy's dead. He doesn't survive those. <laughs> He's dead, man. So all about GP for me, which means that if GP's over on a side lane and Moyu, or excuse me, Shao Al isn't there hitting those massive barrels, that I think Suning actually just get blown out of the water unless they just make a massive pick with the Varus ultimate or with the Rakan ult. Well, that's where they do have the potential for that because like you said, they've got the Varus Rakan, Lissandra is a very easy follow-up, Cannon Barrage to slow someone out of position. But what that means is we need to now pay attention to what Suning are doing with their vision, how they're manufacturing these traps and how they're finding these picks. And hopefully they don't run into a situation like they did in game number one. When you find the big 5v5, when you find the pick, make sure that it's around an objective. You're not just finding a pick for a pick's sake, you're doing so because you want access to a tower, you want access to a dragon, to a baron preferably. The, the way that you set this up makes it sound like it's this high level cerebral setup in order to play around multiple objectives. Well, that's actually the strategy that higher tier teams, JD, Invictus Gaming, Rogue Warriors have used against TOP from the beginning play intelligently around objectives, wait for T.O.P. to get down and dirty, outplay them because you have m mechanically better players, and then take the objective off the back of it. Suning could try to emulate that strategy here. Will T.O.P. Of course, they're going to fall for it. Will T.O.P. see it coming? T.O.P. and Suning are kind of at the similar growth patterns, but T.O.P. just have a bit more... Uh boldness than Suning do. Again, this is the 20 minute Baron team that had that whole gimmick style when they used to be known as Dan Gaming. So TOP recognized at this point in the game, we should be playing around Baron. Doesn't matter how we play around Baron, we will force it. We're assuming <laughs> almost try to overthink a situation and then they stall out. They get paralyzed. They, they open themselves up to uh, mistakes, kind of where their Achilles uh, heel is. So just taking a look at the gold real quick, it was a 1600 gold advantage for Shao Al. Korn also sitting at a 1600 gold advantage over Angel, where it was 600 gold lead for, I believe it was Fury off the back of that, but Cat has to leap away. Oh boy. Pike's a perfect champion for it Cat. It really is. Because it allows him to face check and then not be forced to back as long as he just moves out into vision and then gets all of his health back. And take a look at that. He's even got the Ocean Dragon for more sustain off of that as well. So more chances to step in. Yeah, <laughs> he knows. He knows what's up, but he's got a dive being set up. 100 stacks on that Spellbinder for Chocho. Let me tell you what a terrible decision that would have been. <laughs> if your Yasuo is top lane and not standing next to you, he's a bad decision. Yeah, just don't don't dive it. As Korn just happily pushing into Angel. Uh, T.O.P. with the one three one. This is cool though. So I want to point out the defensive vision that Suning have. They've now spotted out T.O.P. attempting the dive on mid lane, as well as spotting out Yasuo on the Gromp because they've had two key wards. And what it's doing is it's allowing them to have the waves pushed into them safely and acquiring more gold. So yes, Suning have gotten stalled out again, but at least they've kind of cleared out their jungle or have control of the jungle to give them easy access points to the available resources on the map. And that's something that uh, a lot of newer teams do struggle with. You know, once their map goes dark, they almost feed into it faster. Mm -hmm. Teams like LGD, who just haven't quite figured out the defensive vision, Sooning at least have that part of their fundamentals down. Well, the next fundamental is the Mountain Dragon that has just spawned. You can see T.O.P. with a quick recall, get back onto the map. Sterics completed for Korn very early on. He's getting real big, and he's got himself a stopwatch just in case he wants to look for the outplay as XX will be trying to pick up blue buff, and the dragon is being started out. Now, Baron has spawned, and with Moyu over on that side of the map, Sooning decides they don't want anything to do with this. So they've got a recall completed from Angel. He picks up Morello's, and recall completed from Shao Al as he finishes off his Storm Razors. To be frank, Sooning have gotten very fortunate with the dragon spawns. Uh, naturally, they would have hoped for something other than an ocean and first dragon spawn when they had uh, control over yeah. the map. But now, since losing control over this map come mid-game, ocean mountain, not the worst thing to be staring down the barrel of. So, 
they're feeling confident again. They understood that the dragon was being taken. They made the conscious decision of, hey, you know, we don't want to throw the game over that one. So let's just sit back, continue to grab farm, get Varus closer to more items so we can try to play this front back. He's at two so far, the Wits End and Blade of the Ruined King. Still needs a little bit more time to scale up as now vision around that Baron has become so much more important. Sooning are correctly controlling the pit, especially against the team previously known as Dan Gaming. Though we don't quite see that strategy employed as often anymore since when they came into the LPL in 2017, every once in a while, it rears its ugly head. Is it because T.O.P. slash Dan Gaming stopped doing it or because the other <laughs> team just got wise to it? Well, look, I'm not going to say that we can point fingers, but it's definitely because the other teams have figured out the strategy. <laughs> and it's only when T.O.P. feel that the enemy team doesn't quite have vision around it. So we're not seeing the Baron Rush out of T.O.P. It was funny because their coach, BSYY, in interviews would just say that we do it because the other LPL teams don't respect it. They don't yeah. ward it, and it just keeps working. Other things that have been said about uh, T.O.P. is that this is the true friendship team. They're a very giggly team when you watch them uh, behind stage when they are giving their, you know, winners Pep interviews. Talks, yeah. So bringing back Moyu and Korn, obviously the power of friendship, quite strong with this roster as they try to make their run towards playoffs. Mm -hmm. Especially when you look at the people on this roster. You've got Marin, you've got Goong. Goong. Um, lies in the top lane, but still they're they're playing with the feasible five. They finally seem to have settled on a core five stack of members, not the ones you would expect when looking through the just the sheer talent, but they're still seeing success. Right now they are five and seven. Winning this would bring them to six and seven, technically tie them with Sooning, but more importantly, get them closer to their own fourth place in their own conference. And it feels like they just have better team play with Moyu and Korn than they do with Goong and Marn. Because individually speaking, I still believe that Goong and Marn are stronger 1v1 or pound for pound talent players than their respective counterparts in Korn and Moyu. But this top and jungle just synergize and feel so much better on T.O.P. in terms of how they're working cohesively. And that's how T.O.P. have been winning. We said it, you know, at the end of the last match, when T.O.P., someone gets man of the match, it feels like either Korn got hyper-fed and just carried the game, or it was really a full team effort where everyone did their job at different points in the game. Well, we have to ask that question for this game. Korn currently is hyper-fed. Are we still looking for the big carry? Or are we waiting for the Infinity Edge to be completed for 100% crit? I mean, if that's where he wants to sit and wait, uh, it seems to be the only thing that they've got on their minds right now. They're just kind of bow guarding the, the yeah. Baron. But ultimately, if T.O.P. don't fight around Korn, they've almost already lost. Uh, the issue is, is that opens up Shao Ao to get all of the gold on Gangplank. That's the Proto Belt. They're actually going to turn onto XX instead, and they've managed to kill him. Now, Korn is ready with the knockup. He's turning onto Angel, but he takes himself out of the fight. That Glacial Claw. And suddenly, T.O.P. leap forward and get punished. What was brilliant there is that Yoon still has access to the Rakan ultimate, but he didn't chase. Now, you saw that Moyu pulled the trigger on the TP. It was obviously communicated that Kennen had TP'd into the fight. He was on a control ward, so they did not see him. But they said, the Kennen is here. He's looking for an ultimate. Disengage. We had the quickness. They could have tried to run them down right into an AP Cannon ultimate, but they decided not to. So brilliant maneuver from Suning. Take the kill and they don't overextend, giving an opportunity for T.O.P. to punish. It all starts from Korn and XX thinking they can take a tier two. And the issue is, is they didn't necessarily have the vision to catch uh, the flanks. And we talked about how Moyu, excuse me, Shao Al is on the side lanes getting all of this free farm. That Gangplank ultimate did a lot of damage. Oh yeah. And that will deny a lot more momentum from T.O.P. It's four turrets to two, Sooning in favor of that. The Gangplank starting to get pretty big. Still no Infinity Edge completed yet for Korn. As it's even in kills, but a 2,500 gold advantage for Sooning Gaming. And this is where we're starting to reach the question mark stage. Yes, they made the one good play around the tier two and denied T.O.P. and overextending for the turret. But what's next? Are Sooning capable of taking a fight in the mud with T.O.P.? If their gangplank is there, I would say yes, but it's going to come down to execution. Oh, Moyu steps up, eats a pillar, drops a control ward, leaves. Because the scary thing is, is if a Hemo Plague is landed on top of a massive Kennen ultimate, and then you throw a Yasuo in there on top of it, yeah. that Wombo combo is disgusting for T.O.P. So it, it's cool that I feel like we're at a point in the game where either team can still win these 5v5s. I think that T.O.P.'s composition is slightly easier to execute, because again, it's kind of press all of your R buttons, create a Venn diagram of murder, and then just like <laughs> splatter everyone. Um, 
Whereas there's a bit more coordination involved with how soon they need to layer their CC, how they need to have set up for their barrels. I actually remember learning about those uh, in elementary school, because you had your bar graphs of murders, your pie charts of murder, and then your Venn diagrams of murder. Ah, uh, good days. But now Sooning, they're the ones who are trying to deny that Venn diagram, just through what appears to be bar graphs. Shao Al is doing a lot of work in the top lane. He's finished again the Steric Storm Razors. He's real big on the Gangplank. Already he was 1,600 gold ahead of Moyu five minutes ago. Now it's 50 CS and whatever else Gangplank gets. Which means now the same win condition of game number one exists in game number two for Sooning. Just allow Shao Al to play a side lane. He will beat the crap out of Moyu up there in a 1v1. Moyu does not want to be in that lane, and unfortunately he's forced to because he doesn't have the TP. So T.O.P. are thinking, okay, stall out long enough for this TP from the cannon, just try to free farm, grab hold of the Infinity Edge, and then we're going to try to throw the Hail Mary, stack all of our Wombo combos, and win a big team fight. <laughs> Sooning are thinking, just let GP kill the cannon repeatedly. <laughs> Suddenly that blind pick cannon is starting to feel a little bit bad for Moyu. Especially now that Sooning are comfortable playing this 1-3-1 with Angel in one lane and Shao Al in the other. But still, the next Dragon has spawned. You can see that there is very little control on that side of the map for T.O.P. Because Shao Al is just so aggressively chucking out these barrels and trading back and forth. It's AP Cannon. If he gets into a team fight, it is absolutely going to hurt with that Slicing Maelstrom. That means that his laning phase is really suffering, though. Sorry, this long lane, I should be clear, not the laning phase itself. And Fury has also finished off his Gwinsus as well, so things are getting pretty big. And oh. <laughs> Whoops. And again, it feels really cool that it's going to come down to execution, that both teams have kind of their big carry points, the Rage Blade on Varus being completed, the massive gangplank, the flanking from the AP cannon. It's now who's going to get all of their ducks in a row and line it up correctly for this kill shot. Warren has got his red buff. He's also finished off the Infinity Edge, though Spellbinders is only at 20 stacks for Chocho. Okay, here comes Michael Bay. Kennen coming down mid lane. Sprinting as quick as his hamster legs can take him. The wave I is being cleared out so very quickly as the Bone Skewer misses. I say Michael Bay and you go hamster legs. It's obviously an allusion to explosion stuff. <laughs> I, no, I got the reference. I'm juxtaposing hamsters <laughs> and explosions, therefore I see. Uh, Overwatch. You put him in a giant robot, bam! What's there, his name? There's your problem. Hammond? I think? I thought it was like Death Ball. Doom Ball. I don't oh know. no, yeah, that's that's the name of the, the robot. T.O.P. 29 minutes in. They're actually going to turn on this Moyu. Baron. Oh, he's, he's looking got, for the he's, flank on the far side. He's got Flash. Big Smep play coming in. Blue he wants trinket. it. Cat steps up. He's trying to bait this out. It's T.O.P. are maneuvering around the vision, but oh. Sooning do not take the bait. They're so patient. Well, oh, now go. they're going in. That's not patience at all. As Angel goes in at the same time, Korn is in the back line. He's found Fury and destroys him. Hemo playing onto three. Korn is looking for the carry. He goes in onto Hacker. They both go golden, but it's Hacker who goes in first. That's the knockup. Korn looks for one. He gets the double kill. Korn is doing work, finding himself with the triple kill and turning this fight around almost single handedly. Shao Al is running for his life now. Okay, some massive outplays on both sides. The fact that it's Xiao Al, the last man standing, is kind of the most fed member of Sooning versus this Vladimir and Yasuo combo. Unfortunately, you can't force Chocho out of this lane. Vladimir is just too big of a problem, that much closer to level 16. And Korn is now 8 and 0. Oh, God. Completed Infinity Edge on this Yasuo. He's big. And again, I was so impressed with Sooning, the fact that they forced Moyu out of his hiding place, and then they immediately pull the trigger. I feel like they get a bit too overzealous. Uh, Moyu doesn't have access to Hourglass, I don't think yet. I don't think he's completed it. But once he does, that goes from bad to worse. That is such an easier team fight to execute on for T.O.P. Uh-oh, on the bottom of your screen, you can see they've managed to find a pick onto Shao Al. Teleport completed from Angel as he's chasing onto Chocho. You're crazy! He goes back up, and the Tides of Blood, but he goes golden, and Korn is still going back in for more. Angel's able to find the kill by ulting himself. Windwall plus the Pillar of Filth, but Korn is a monster. 1-0-1-0. One, zero, one, zero. But that was a huge bounty now given over to Varus, I believe, was got the kill. Are you doing the math? What's the napkin math? That is 10 in binary. 1-0-1-0. One, zero, one, zero. No, wait. That's the other way. That's 5 in binary. I'm waiting for a number. What number on what? On the bounty. Oh, it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was really big. <laughs>
<laughs> Here it goes again. They find Shao Al. I feel like there's a bit of a disconnect between us. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Jojo and Korn think that they've caught the bout. I agree with it. I love the fact that Angel, as one of the newest members into the LPL, is so confident to make these types of chasing plays. Like, he's gonna be all right. Like, kid, you understand exactly what this league is all about. You've got the fire, you've got the fight, you got the bloodlust. Uh, I believe that was Fury who got the kill. I didn't quite see how much that was, but oh man, that is a lot of gold. The analytical point there is that Varus analytical. is rich. Yes, <laughs> he has absolutely got a lot. Look at the gold difference between 80 carries now. He's a solid 2,000 gold, 1,700 corn on the other side though. He's 4,000 gold ahead of Angel. And you know, I asked the question earlier, is it gonna be because Corn hard carries the game or are TOP gonna play uh, no, we have an answer. We we do. He is currently in hard carry mode and is trying to solo the Baron. He's spun it out. They're still going to do it, though. Can oh Barrage boy. is ready for Shao Al. He's just sitting on the entrance to the pit. Cat is on the side. There's the Barrage. Korn still deep into the pit. He's got no flash. He's got no cleanse. Baron picked up. Now they need to get out of here, but the fight is initiated on the front side. XX looking for an escape. Windwall tries to stall it out. Korn's looking for an opening. There's the Hemoplake, but they've killed Moyu. Korn has got nowhere to go to. He tries to re-engage with a two-man knockup into the back. GA is popped. But T.O.P., you've already got the Baron. Just leave him to die and leave. They go back into it, giving a triple kill over that. And Cat is looking absolutely bloodthirsty for the kills. Dies for the cost of it. One for four. And XX is the only person with the Baron. I don't think it tastes any uh, better than that for Sooning. They're chasing him. <laughs> He's just trying to grab the wave to stall them, but unfortunately, uh, Shao Al, yeah, that. He's gonna hit that tower and it's gonna explode. Oh yeah, there he goes, starting to shred through with that Trinity Force, and they're even letting Mo Yu, uh, sorry, XX go back with that Baron. This is the inhibitor in a massive minion wave, four members of Sooning. Could they be looking for a little bit more here? I mean, it's 20 seconds. They do have a cannon wave, but I actually agree with this, pulling back. Uh, again, Merry Christmas, Sooning. I think T.O.P. Uh, got you a pony and a new car. And four kills. And everything you could have ever wanted. Why are they still here? Like, so, Cat Moyu, I get it. There is clearly a miscommunication problem. Moyu is saying, I'm already going to die. I'm going to go in. Uh, but then ultimately, it kind of gives this false confidence to the rest of T.O.P. And when Korn and Chocho decide to commit, Cat and uh, XX have already left the fight. Now. Cat going in on the back of this. That is not necessary. Remember when we talk about individual decision making? <laughs> the masochist. He's like, I want it. He did. He got the kill on the Baron. Your life was worth more than that. You had the oh, Baron. Oh, boy. It's one Baron that survives in the end for T.O.P. And it is unfortunately on the Gragas. Good news. Kenan now has an hour glass. No, he doesn't. I swear he had it. Did he sell it? <laughs> no, never mind. I was looking at Vladimir's. I just did the stopwatch. Yeah, it's that's fine. a Vladimir. But Cloud Dragon being picked up by T.O.P. off the back of his 90 seconds on the Baron, and now we can see XX making his way into lane as they set up some vision. Cat hits the skewer onto Yoon, pulls him back in, but Hacker has found him. The rest of T.O.P. are split, and what was a clean, elegant, smooth game from Sooning has now become a mud-covered affair. There's lots of slipping and sliding. But they're really confident to do so uh, and fight in the mud because Varus has access to GA and GP yes. is huge. So we talked about how Varus really wouldn't be able to do anything a lot of these team fights through the dive potential that TOP have on their composition. With the GA, he's totally fine. It's going to take him so long to die while uh, Gangplank is able to get out rotation after rotation on these barrels. All right, going back to base, Moyu. I feel like Moyu just has this tattooed on his wrist, and it says, what would Smeb do? <laughs> Every time he looks down at his keyboard, he just sees it. WWSD. Uh, well, recall and buy himself not a stopwatch is one thing. As Korn, he's real big. Got that GA, now he's got himself a Giant's Belt on top of that. But his GA was popped Still in the last Still looking for that fight. opportunity. I mean, he's got a few more minutes until it's back up. I believe that's two or three minutes. I actually feel that right now, due to the GA differences, that Sunni are slightly stronger mm. in the 5v5. Um, I feel like that shifts dramatically when the GA on Yasuo comes back up, and I really wish that this guy had an hourglass, <laughs> but that's fine. There he goes. He was just looking for a little bit more gold. Pushes out one wave. Ah, yes. The six-item hourglass. The classic. What every Kennen needs. <laughs> and 
And there he goes, Morellos and Control Wards. Look at that, plan for the team. Did he sell his Blasting Ward? Oh, no, no, it's no went we got to the, the Morellos. Morellos. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look, we're having some thoughts. Meanwhile, Rabadons is on the way for Chocho. He's got the double NLR. Look at the teleport! What was it's so two? deep! Look at how deep that teleport is! And he's thinking about it. He's really thinking. He's got the teleport. He's got the flash. This is your moment. Oh, he's found Shoal. There he goes, lands the stun. Look at the damage he's that he's starting in. to do. That's going to be it. He's not and in. He's not going in. He's still not going in. He's thinking about going in, but he's still not going in. He's thinking about it. There <laughs> he goes. He's going in. He's in the back line. He will die. But look at the damage that he gets across the front line. Korn is trying to do what he can. The knockup is late. Fury gets dope. Hacker tries to make something worse out of it. As Korn under the turret. Gets the triumph and survives again. T.O.P. win the fight. Get out the WD-40, get some duct tape, <laughs> slap it together, because in the end, T.O.P. get it done. It wasn't clean, it wasn't perfect, <laughs> but they've got the creep wave, and they certainly will get the in hip. T.O.P., they are making No, Korn left! They're pushing Or no, excuse it. me, Jojo left. Trying to finish that off, looking for the recall. He's you got the needlessly large rod, the inhibitor. It will be finished off. Shao Al is looking for it. Stormraiser's doing damage. That was one barrel away ah, from disaster. Ah, that's why he's leaving again. Then they turn onto Shao Al. It very well could be disaster. It's over the wall. Shao Al looking for the outplay. Gets a slow, late wind wall from Korn, but XX, real low health. I'm going to say it bent around the wind wall. Ah, oh, you no. hate to see that happen. The teleport onto XX. He just wants to leave. Oh, and the ice all the way over the distance. Cat is there. Do not bone skewer him into the Gragas. There he goes. <laughs> I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> oh, boy. And they are very intense right now. This game is causing me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. T.O.P. How did they jerry-rig a fight out of that? My favorite part is Moyu here. Now, uh, naturally, the big thing is, is that Chocho and Korn are doing a lot of damage. Well, they will be doing a lot of damage. Right now, Gangplank is absolutely just destroying everyone. But then Moyu, he finds his inner Smeb. He finally gets in. It's a decent ultimate, maybe a little bit later, but he found his perfect moment. Just needed to wait for it. The clock had to strike noon, or like noon-ish, for him to look to go in. But XX! Oh, so clearing a minion wave, gets caught by four members. Welcome to the Mud Wrestle, boys. He flashes away, and Angel uses the ultimate to lock down that kill. Baron going to be spawning in 45 seconds. That's 64 seconds Ooh. on the death timer, which means that the Real only bad. option T.O.P. have is to force a fight to delay the Baron. But this late in the game, there's going to be a lot of burn. Now, super minions are pushing in. Korn's actually going to look for a recall here as Suning look to bait around this Baron buff. And T.O.P., I mean, we mentioned they were able to jerry-rig that fight together. They're going to have to pull some very wacky rabbit out of a very unexpected hat. Um... They're going to need to really try their hardest in this. They just need to stall. Real big. It's five versus four. 20 seconds on the clock. Hacker is chasing. Of course, he is chasing the member with the Banshees. There he goes. Cat hops to safety. You just you just need to stall. You don't need to fight, T.O.P. That's what they're doing. Looks like that's they, they've got their eyes on it. Unfortunately, they didn't place down a lot of vision over here. There they go. Still just waiting as Cat tries to step forward around the side. Mo, you, ooh, you hate to see that happen. Uses the proto belt, has no flash. Hacker's trying to catch up. Yuna's there. That was the predator. That Used was by Chocho. The most intense slow car chase I've ever seen. Ooh. <laughs> oh boy. Now, really big minion wave pushing up top. Angel is heading up to clear it, but XX is back up. He's grouped with his team. He's got Smite ready. 100 stacks on the Spellbinders and the Rabadons finish for Chocho. Even though Randuin's completed for Corn, as they are trying to dodge outside of the vision, but that, can you still call that a Baron Gate Ward? Uh, I'm gonna call it a Raptor Gate Ward. Sure. Brilliantly done, though. Uh, GA should be noted that it's up for uh, Yasuo, but not for Varus. Ooh! You can hear the crowd, they got behind that one. Yeah, but it didn't do Barrel that much damage. Three. Again, there's still the Ocean Dragon again. They are so tanky at this point. They turn onto Baron right now. That's Blue Trinket. Here comes Sooning. Look at Moyu. Cat is in the front. Like he you said, Moyu, flash. he's trying to get behind it. He's taking the long route. The fight's already almost over as it's all a melee. Hacker goes in. Moyu turning onto Shout Al, but again, he's got the GA. They've managed to kill XX and TOP. They're getting pretty low. Moyu still holding onto the ultimate, looking for the opening. He walks it up. He manages to get the stun onto two, separating them from the fight. They pick it up, but he trades himself. Angel has died two for one. 
but it might be enough for Sooning to back off, either force this wave into the mid lane so that T.O.P. have to respond to it, and then they can either move in, clear and control the vision around the Baron, or even move towards the Elder Drake, which is what you see Fury doing right now. He can probably take that by himself. And it looks like that's what he's doing, dropping the assist ping as a massive mini wave pushes bottom. It's going to be cleared out in Fury. Maybe not. Doesn't have his... Uh... Blade of the Ruined King, or yep. he's pulling it out of Vision. He's not getting a lot of health back right now, but the trade, Elder Dragon for Baron. There is a control word in the pit denying this. As long as they don't clear it, it won't give over Vision, but T.O.P., how did they find this opening? So... Are they going to wait for their team to respawn? No. So, <laughs> Baron, for, we're going to... Go for it. Just, it's all yours. We're just going to let that one go. That yeah. They didn't wait the two seconds, but that's fine. <laughs> it could be stolen. We don't know. The pressure's on. Cannon barrage. <laughs> okay. It was on cooldown. Baron for Elder. The scary thing, though, is that uh, I feel like in this game, specifically, since we're fighting more than we are sieging, that the Elder Dragon probably means more between these two teams. And that uh, it feels like we've had a bit of an ARAM. That last team fight, I wish we had the replay. I would point out the fact that Moyu, while he has his flash this time around, he did not have his flash last time around. And I think a huge issue was the fact that Kennen took 10 years <laughs> to... Guys, I'll, I'm on my way, trust me. It's like that friend I'm, when he I'm texts you, I'm on the way, and he's like getting into the shower. Yeah. You were supposed to be here 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Where are you? Oh boy. <laughs> that was... Ooh, looking real dicey. Because right now, the only thing missing from this game is some shrines. This is fast. This is fun. This is some straight up Dominion. And Sooning, they are up in kills. They're up about 4,000 gold. We're in the late game stages. We're at the six item team fights. It's all about execution. Look, look at the, look at the last item that Moe just bought. That's not a stopwatch. That's a needlessly large rod. To be fair to him, they do do a lot of magic damage. They do uh, so much magic damage. So that's how you, uh, that's how you talk about the. You like, overindex. But they do so much magic damage. You had to get the BV. You got the BV early. <laughs> He's like, I either pick this one or I pick the hourglass. I understand, are you? I would love it if we were actually wrong. He did have his onions and he sold it to complete like what was it, the void staff earlier. <laughs> Oh boy, that would really with it. that would really do it for me. I know what, I'm not gonna judge him. He does him. He he does. Oh, that's the pillar on the cat. But again, the Baron on top of the minion wave. 90 seconds oh, and no. that flash engage, but Chocho reacts in time. The wave crashes into the tier two as they see it's a one-three split, but sooning a group is five. And they're running away. Here comes Moyu. He's looking oh, for the he's racing. They Not can't. even gonna teleport. They can't do it because look at where Korn is. He doesn't have TP. He's cleansed Flashy Aswo. He'd have to run all the way there. So again, miscommunication. The fact that when Moyu attempts to flank from bottom lane and Korn instead presses B and starts to walk up behind his team versus both of them flanking at the same time. These are kind of the cracks in the armor that you're looking for when you examine T.O.P. about where the team is not syncing up, where their weaknesses are. Still things to be ironed out that they are starting to see some success. It's not quite yielding them the wins that they need. Though again, Sooning, the gatekeepers of the LPL, the middle of the pack. If T.O.P. can prove themselves, it could be the beginning of something new. That's the Predator again, 100 stacks on the Spellbinders as T.O.P. step up to the Bear Inhibitor with Baron for 30 seconds. And that would hurt! But luckily, Cat on the Pike will be able to heal himself back up. And he goes right back in. It's a perfect champion for Cat. He never has to back ever. He can face check all he wants, Dom. <laughs> Tragically, inside of the base, there's no wards for Moyu to teleport to to look for a flank. But Not he's to got... mention the long range siege is really difficult without Moyu stepping up. But he has flash and he has proto belt. So his uh, access to backline, even if they're playing front to back, Ooh, is that's still the really cast, deep. But a good flash gets him out of there. Angel ults himself with the AoE gets Go, knocked Moyu! Up. Moyu finally goes in, but he's already lost one. The GA for Korn is going to be popped as they dive under this XX. Goes forward. Chocho going way too deep. Korn gets one, but he's got to get out of the fight as he heals up. And Chocho going one versus two. A shout out gets his GA pop. Chocho will die. And the inhib is still standing. Corn, the sole survivor. I don't know if you saw what happened to Moyu there, but he popped like a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Just shrapnel everywhere. <laughs> oh boy, a late recall and 40 seconds on the clock for XX and Chocho. Moyu as well, but Fury, he's still got his GA with Xiao Al 
and Hacker in front of him. They're looking for the inhib. Yeah, they can end this. I don't think they're just looking for the inhib. I think they're actually looking for the game end. Like you're saying, it's just about 19 seconds on Moyu as the assist, but if you keep that minion wave alive, aw, oh, don't chicken out. I've got good news and bad news. The good news is... <laughs> that T.O.P. are still in this game. And the bad news? That T.O.P. are still in this game. <laughs> and we're going to three Barons, We're going boys. three. You know what? I like the We fights. might even get another Elder Dragon off of this as well. We're definitely going to get another oh, Elder. Oh, baby. A triple. <laughs> 46 and a half minutes into this game. We are at the fullest of items. We could not have more full items. He well, has that's a not stopwatch. <laughs> 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 okay, look at the pinata here of Kennen. He's gonna go in. He doesn't even complete his ult. I think a bear lets him and he instantly dies. <laughs> Shao Al does so much. Wow! And then Shao Al, he does get his GA popped as uh, it looks like Chocho over indexes to try to kill Fury on the back, who just simply flashed and walked it away. <laughs> and what did he sell? Oh, he sold. No, he's got the needlessly large rod. What did he sell? His Banshee Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a sec, this does nothing! The goggles! <laughs> they do nothing. I feel like he just learned a very important lesson about Kennen today. This is a very expensive lesson to learn. <laughs> He's like, I just, I don't understand. I keep instantly dying. I keep going pop. That's oh a, boy. That's a skin. It should be birthday party Kennen. <laughs> Surprise! It's a Zanyas. <laughs> no, it's socks. It's a bench. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, 48 minutes in. The game is still going on. 50 seconds on the Baron. Two minutes for that Elder Dragon. Sooning already took the first. If they take the second, that's the empowered Elder Dragon buff. He's going in! Oh, that's it. That's the teleport. Look at that. Even Chocho's going in. The Predator XX in the front, but they found Cat. He's going to try to land the stun. The Cash, but Fury's in the middle. He goes low, but it's still alive. The GA has not been popped. Finally, it goes down, but Kord is already dead. Moe's in the back. He's going real late. The Zanyas for even more damage. Look at how effective it is, but it's not enough. Sooning get the AoE, and Sooning win the fight. And they're gonna win the game. The creep wave is pretty far behind them, but look at those death timers. They can take their time. They can wait it out. This is Varus and Gangplank, and we're going to game three. We absolutely are. Sooning walk it up to the Nexus. Nice and slow, leisurely, and well bought. They turn on to the Nexus, and like you said, that ace match is now upon us. Sooning versus T.O.P. going to game three. Woo! And unfortunately, Mo Yu was late to another team fight. Looked for a super deep teleport. And I will say this, Sooning did a great job forcing that fight. So it was T.O.P. that were caught out while Mo Yu was on the way. But there were a couple different questionable item decisions, a couple different sideways fights. I feel like that could have gone either way in and the even end. Even in the team fight decisions and the flanking opportunities, you talked about it earlier over the course of the game. <laughs> Wow, that's a gold graph. I'm not sure if that's a gold graph or if that's a, a waveform of music of Moyu's scream of go, 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 go. It's actually my heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in that 49 minute game, Sooning finally able to close it out and we do have to commend Sooning for picking themselves a late game composition just in case things got a little messy. I don't think they were quite expecting it to go like this, though. If Sooning are listening, if their coach needs uh, needs any tips, looks like he's got it on lock right now, just pick a late game insurance policy. Your mid game is not clean enough for the early game leads that you're getting to close out on, and the GP was the huge factor here. Especially when you have such a hard carry uh, top laner like Xiao Ao. That guy is going to be the next go going of the LPL. Give him weapons. And. Whew. That was a ride. That, that was that was that was a roller coaster, a journey that we went on. It's been a while since I've had a game like that, <laughs> and I just hope that the, I hope that the third one is just as entertaining. Ooh, love that. That's not even our match of the week. This is the appetizer, and it's already just paying up dividends. It's chewy. You take it. <laughs>
Do you want to start with draft? I'll start Let's with, go draft. with draft. Let's go with draft. Let's talk about uh, what exactly happened. Because again, TOP, they showed us their draft really early. They showed us the composition that they wanted to take very, very early on with the Gragas, Yasuo, Ken, and the Wombo combo, deciding not to take the Orianna on the next round and instead investing in the Vladimir to try to get through that laning phase. Um, but it was... I'm I can't even remember what happened in that early game. So in the early game, there was an opportunity where uh, normally when uh, tri triple double X takes a Gragas, he has early gank pathing, um, but his laners didn't set him up to gank anything. So he effectively just sat in his own jungle. And it was actually uh, Sooning that got the jump on everything, that they were able to get the early snowball. They dropped the tower very early on in the game, started unlocking the GP, and started denying so much farm away from Moyu, uh, because GP was able to hold the wave. When it did bounce back to Moyu, yeah. they were setting up plays opposite side of the map. And so again, we had another game too, uh, where Sooning had full control over the early game, and then they got stalled out in the mid-game. Mid yeah, and though that was a little bit dicey over the course of that early game as well, because we did see some opportunities for the Wombo combo for T.O.P. to set themselves up. Uh, of course, we do have to talk about that first fight in which we got to see Moyu effectively utilize the teleport flank for the first time, because I, it really feels like that's what it came down to over the uh, first fight, excuse me, mid-late game fight in which Moyu comes in. But you're actually fairly accurate. It felt like we didn't get a lot of these big fights for the longest time because both teams were avoiding them. And that was simply because TLP wanted to fight, but Suning did such a good job with their defensive vision. If you look at the mini map here on the top side of their map, they have defensive vision in their triangle side. It forced TLP to look for a dive like this because Suning understood, okay, we just need to sit out. We need to uh, sweep out our jungle, have control there, and then make sure that we have these safe pathways that we can walk from lane to lane and continue to farm our gangplank. So, Suning did a great job understanding it's time to bunker down, like we got to go into the bomb shelter and just sit this one out. And TOP were really struggling to figure out how to crack that, and it forced Moyu into uh, very precarious situations <laughs> that his itemization really wasn't set up for. I mean, he really looked for the all or nothing. He our, tried. our second fight that we've got for you is that all or nothing, in which he goes into the base, and you pointed out what happens when Cannon gets absolutely popped, and I believe this is actually the last fight. Look at how deep Moyu has he's, to go in to he's try like, I'm coming. to get in there. I'm almost there. Um, I'm, I'm almost there. But look at how much damage he does once he gets in there. Gets the full slicing maelstrom. Ooh, eats a barrel and stalls it out. Even more damage. Ooh. But just imagine if he had been there and T.O.P. hadn't gotten caught out and they could have fought with the Kennen instead of having Kennen fight after them. Yeah, and again, that's the communication that we're talking about because it is that knife's edge for T.O.P. They are so close to transcending, and transcending into an upper echelon team, though we are now still seeing that reckless sort of mud wrestling style play. It continues to be effective because they are willing to get down and dirty against some bigger teams. And again, we kind of talk about how JD Gaming feel like the baby Edward Gaming, how Sooning are the baby Invictus Gaming. I've got it now for T.O.P. They're the baby Rogue Warriors. They're just a little bit crazy. They're a little bit messy. They're yeah. really fun to watch. And we can see that in the replay that we now have got ready for you, the one in the Nexus where we do get to see Moyu get, as you so eloquently put it, pop like a balloon. Um, I didn't know that Kennen tried to emulate grenades, but every once in a while, you just got to go in and explode. It was just, uh, it was very cute to watch because he gets a good ultimate, but then almost immediately dies. Mm. And he's like, ah, I guess that's all of my damage. That's all I've got. And then his team just falls apart. And at this point, Shao Al is just, he's a big boy. Yeah. I mean, even Fury at that point was five, six items. We didn't get a chance to really harp on him over the course of that game, but it was Shao Al and Fury who were putting out enough damage over the course of these team fights while Angel was stalling out those two massive carries. Uh, because Shao Al's gangplank, he's still a very good top laner. We haven't really seen Sooning exclusively play around him so much this split ever since Angel has joined into the yep. roster, but now that we're seeing that, that could be more of an avenue for them in the future. Also, if you have a champion like Gangplank, you're totally fine to just leave Shao Al to his own devices. If Sooning have decided that they're going to funnel all of their resources and time and energy into setting up Hacker and Angel in that mid lane, leave this guy to his own devices on a champion like Gangplank, and then just have him hard carry you know, in the in the late game. There's a reason why his most played champion right now is Mundo, why he's such a successful gangplank. You don't need to give these champions a lot of your attention to reap the rewards of such a powerful top laner that you have. Certainly seeing the growth of Sooning as a team as finally they respect the late game from the draft phase and it yields very clear results against T.O.P. Though it's still a little bit dicey with T.O.P. I think it more came down to T.O.P. getting caught in that last fight. Though they were looking for it, they just didn't quite have the time as Sooning were the ones who struck first. Um, 
But still, it was back and forth over the course of that entire series. What are we looking at for game three? Is it, we, we've seen growth from both of these teams. What What's going to close this series out? I have a feeling that we're going to have a fight over Gangplank just because both teams have wanted to opt into grabbing that one. And I think that might be the decider because I think we're going late again. <laughs> Very well, could be. But we'll see what that's going to be. As we said, that game three is coming at you in just a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. The LPL is going to be right, right back with that game three. 苏牛队员不会为遗憾找借口，必须变强，必须进步。